Hey guys, welcome back to The Virtuous Life. Um, so today's video is going to be all about internship. More specifically, how I got my internship. So this is my own experience. I was going to write, write, uh, make a video about like how you can get different internships, but what's even the point? I'm going to talk about how I got my internship. I've got notes on my phone, so this video will go smoothly, will go well. I need to stress this enough. You need to watch all this, all of this video, okay? I know it might be long, but I was going to split it into separate parts, but I don't know. I just want to film all in one go, from like the application to the interview to actually starting my job, this, that, how I got the scholarship, internship. Like, watch all through. I have timestamps, timestamps. Timestamps here and in the description below, and I'll list all like the different scholarships, scholarships I got through Southampton, internships, all of that. So if that seems like something you're into, and how I got my engineering internship, then carry on watching this video. Cue the intro. Okay. Oh la la. <laughs> Okay, so um, to begin with, I am going to talk about um, so what I'm on. So basically, I, I got my internship, my engineering internship through a scholarship. And the scholarship I got <laughs> was the, um, a one that Southampton runs called Success. Okay, so Success is an internal scholarship scheme for first and second years civil engineering student at the University of Southampton. And through Success, through Success, you get a... Summer placement, a paid summer placement every year to graduation. You also get, depending on what, some, some companies also give you like bursaries. So you get 1.6K every year and you can use that on whatever you want, whether that's like uni stuff, like traveling, that's up to you what you use your money for. And then you also get a, 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 an IC mentor, so like institution civil engineering mentor. And then um, upon, you might even, depending on how well you did in your internship, you might get a grad scheme upon graduation so they might like the company you're with might say i really like you virtue would you come and do our grad program okay so yeah so that's how i got my internship through the scholarship anyways i'll talk about success and the requirements so in order to like maintain your internship and scholarship you must have a two one a two one is 60%, okay? So you need to get a minimum of 60 to 10 to maintain the scholarship. If you get less than this, they can withdraw the scholarship. Okay. Okay. So, the application. That's why I had my laptop. That's why I'm sitting here, different setting, because I wanted to go through the application. The application, so the success application. Okay, bear in mind, I applied in the first year. I didn't get it. That was like a big learning curve for me. I was just like, like I got two interviews from Costain and Lam Rook and all my days. Let me just say I fumbled the back quick, like so quick. But like it is what it is. I got my scholarship in the second year. Um, yeah. So this is the application. It's just a general application. It goes. It has like personal information. So like your your name, your telephone number, your address, blah blah blah. And then you have like educational background. So they want to know your A level grades. I think someone asked me, is it, is it really important, your A-level grades? To be fair, I don't think it is. I just think it matters that you got into the university. So if you got the requirement or like if you got in through clearance or whatever way you got in, if you got into the university and you're studying this course, that's that. That won't ever bring you back on your um, A-level grades. Unless like, because by the time you apply in first, uh, unless you're in first year, they might look and see but like in second year, they really just cared about my, my, my first year results, even though it doesn't count. Like I got 71%. And so that's what they were looking at. But honestly, I don't think grade is like a main, main thing in like getting this scholarship or internship because it's all about how you do in the interview and your application, okay? Basically with success, you apply and they'll send this application to like a dozen different engineering and construction company firms. Okay, no, engineering companies. And then they will choose based on the application whether they want to give you an interview. And that interview is your chance to like plead your case and like show them that you're the right woman or man for the job. Okay, anyways. Oh, I'm just checking I was recording. Okay, so then you have like education, you have like my certain like the A levels I took maths, product design, physics. Uh, expected year graduation 2023. That's when I was doing the year in the street. Nothing anymore. Okay, and then it's like 
these are like typical application application questions explain why you chose your course and how it relates it relates to your career aspiration at this time okay it's always why did you choose the course they need to know why you like this course and if you don't like it you gotta sell it to them so i was like civil engineering makes a real impact to the world blah blah the main parts of civil engineering i like to work on is structural engineering and bridge engineering this course will allow me to make better use of you just explain it to them in like a very like i think my uh, this like this was about 87 words it wasn't that long and then the next thing is like what was your what was your greatest personal achievement outside academic that's another thing you want to do when i tell you it's not all about academics you kind of want to like get gain a background besides your course like they want to know who you are as well as like why you want to study the degree so that like, what's your personal your, your greatest personal achievement so you can't say oh my gosh i got a t first and first year i mean that is an achievement but they kind of want to know things outside like university or outside like engineering so i talked about like i worked in a charity for like like a summer i, don't, I can't remember which summer so i was talking about that um i also talked about yeah anyways and the next thing is like what experience do you personally have in the civil engineering industry like it's not a bad thing if you don't have any experience like i didn't have any experience prior to applying to this application like i know what to sign i mean i did a couple stem internship over like a work work placement work experience that's it over like a level and that so i worked i did like a week in gsk and all of that but like i didn't actually have a per, like personal experience in like engineering but that was completely fine like it's not the end of the world and the next question was like which of these two skills do you think is the most important time management organization skills with these seven questions okay there's no right or wrong answer you just have to sell your answer so i chose i deem organization skills to be the most important skills to have an engineer without doubt every single engineer will encounter having to work on multiple projects at one point in their career this requires a level of order okay i could have easily have chosen ability to think of you on your feet common sense actually i didn't even choose common sense i think common sense is important it enables the constructability of a design it's very easy to think that the best designs are, are the most complex, but there's a beauty and simplicity. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you just have to sell it. So those some questions, there's no right or wrong. It's just whether you can, like, prove to me that this is the most important. And then, last but not least, there's a section was like, what would you prefer, design or construction? You need to bear in mind that in civil engineering, there's the design aspect and there's a the construction. So there's consulting and contracting. Nowadays, the lines are a bit more blurred. Like there isn't like two distinctive roles because so some contracting can do consultant work and some consulting can do contracting work. But like if I had to like put it into a two box, contractors mainly mainly working on site. You um you're on site, you think on your not think on your feet, you're on site, you do that on site issue, like the construction, all of that, the subcontractors, contractors, the clients, sometimes, sometimes. Consultancy, you do the design aspect, you do the calculations, you do the CAD, you do the drawings, you do the all of that. And you mainly deal with the client one on one. Okay. And so and that was the application, and then they told you if you wanted to put down a particular sponsor so there was like different ones like vinci costain key groups baffle bt lango rook wsp there was so many different engineering companies you could choose from and so after i've done that application basically what happens next is that i ooh, <laughs> i send the application off to the success coordinator and the success coordinator will now give that application to a dozen of the engineering companies there's different types of scholarship but i won't dwell on that much if you want to know about the different scholarships if just in case you don't go to southampton you probably not all of you go to southampton i'll link a video explaining about quest the royal academy of engineering they have two really good scholarships that you can earn like 5k during your um study anyway oh lastly the scholarship doesn't pay for my tuition fees and the the only sponsor i get like money wise is the 1.6k a year i get from like the like the company that sponsors me and i do get paid summer placement the summer placement is paid for okay anyways the next thing this section will now be interview okay interview you okay interview all oh my days okay i always used to i hate interviews i also like do bad because i always just think like how am i supposed to articulate myself prove to them i'm the best woman for this job without also like stumbling upon my words and this that blah blah but it, it just, honestly it takes practice. You know when people say that? Yeah, it takes practice. When I tell you first year, I was so scared. Nerve, oh, nerve was just all over my body. I just couldn't even speak, yet alone persuade them that they should hire me upon, like, against all of these people. Like, first year, I'll explain what happened, why it was bad. I was, I was too much in my head. I over, actually, I underplanned. I, I didn't do as much planning as I should have, especially for this, like, such a big, big thing. Um... 
you know when you trip up on a question i remain in that trip like that trip was forever there instead of me to walk, like just pick myself back up i just like i got in my head i was just i couldn't do it um so yeah that's why like i had lang and rook and coste first year which i didn't get i didn't get us then none of them chose me and in the second year i had Osborne, which I like if you guys haven't heard of, I put like a stick sticker, the logo and Vinci. So you remember Vinci, which is like a really, really big construction company. Anyways, oh by the way, I chose contracting because I wanted to like dabble in site work. Okay, so the interview. Um so the two companies I had was you know, Osborne and Vinci. And what I did was preparation. I always say don't over prepare because if you over prepare you're setting yourself for failure, okay? You know when they tell you to give a speech, like in a natural speech, but if you try to memorize a speech, you're just gonna stumble upon your words if you can't remember one tiny bit. Okay, so over prepare for it, over prepare. If you over prepare, you could fail sometimes, but under preparation is even worse, okay? Believe me. Okay, so what I did when I knew I thought I had these two in um companies they're very two different companies okay osborne's a family-owned company so osborne's a surname and you're over vinci is a massive massive construction company and its parent group is vinci construction and its headquarters in france okay so we have like a in total vinci has like 165,000 employees and you and osborne's like a main a uk construction company and it has about um 5,000 or something anyways it was di two different things so i i decided to make a fact sheet okay this is not over preparation because i needed to know the core values um the mission statements something interesting something that you could talk to them about in the interview that isn't like on the front cover of the page you need to dig deep inside the website you can't just bring up like everything that anyone will find any like susan karen virtue could find just like opening the front website you need to you need to show them that you kind of spent like 10 15 20 minutes looking through that website and finding something that only not only interests you but stands out so i found some of that like like different type of schemes fast track thing um, um icu charter ship like things that like you can talk to them about okay and then i looked at um like also just other things that interest you like i want to see the diversity in the company i wanted to see um, if they care about sustainability the environment what they're doing to tackle co2 emissions all these different things you can bring up into the interview okay so when it was interview day i decided i said to myself i was just not going to get nervous i know it's like easier said than done but i just did not want to think about it everyone's like oh you have an interview i was like yeah yeah i do, I do, I do. but let's not talk about it like i just want to go in there do that and come out and so it was interview day and i had uh osborne first and no i had europe first and this interview went really really well like you know when you have that feeling that you just got the job on the on, on the dot like i just had a feeling i sat down they were like oh amazing first year results so you did well and i was like yeah yeah thanks um and then i was just talking and like i was so secure in myself and my ability to like explain to them why i'm the right woman for this job that that's why it went easily because the first year i didn't believe in myself i, I just knew that i hope they take me but mm, there's probably someone else better for this job Mm, they can sense that and that's probably why i didn't know that's probably that's the reason why i didn't get the job i walked in there knowing that listen you're not going to get a better candidate than me <laughs> sounds so cocky but like if you go through in that mindset then um you do better so they'll ask me questions about like like for interviews you might want you prepare the generic engineering questions like why did you choose engineering um where do you see yourself in five years like which sector of engineering do you want to go to they might even ask you about chartership if you want to become a chartered engineer and then um, they'll ask you the generic, I want to know you question. So give me three words your friends would describe you. And then you have to like talk about, oh, they'll say I'm passionate, I'm organized, I'm a leader, this, that, and you have to explain it, okay? Um, the, like, there's always engineering questions, there's always character-based questions. So pe you prepare those. And the, even if I had a mock interview try with my friend, like, anyways, so you just want to prepare all these questions, like not too many, but just know the generic ones. You know the ones that you know will come up you want to do that properly and so yeah and the one thing i talked about to like you over you always want to ask them after like an interview like but what can you offer me like i've seen that you have an emerging leaders um scheme and program could you please elaborate more on that what does that mean does that mean i can work through the company and get to a higher management position within a shorter period of time and that's what i asked and then they explained that and it was just good interact with the interviewers these people want to hire you like they don't want to see you fail i i guess so like really like listen just smile your way through it like <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that's so funny 
okay yeah Osborne went really really well as well so like the two companies went well to be honest I didn't really mind which one I got because with success you don't get to choose if you they choose for you they place you they have like a matching system to give a to give as many students a placement as possible anyways yeah that anyways yeah that's the interview um why i thought the interview went well well it's all about one how you look if you look good you feel good you do good um presented yourself i presented myself well i walked in well handshake this that um articulation like i'm not saying you have to like i, I i'm not saying you have to like like just speak clearly okay make sure what you're saying makes sense <laughs> you don't have to say too much but just make sure the thing you do say makes sense okay and then connecting with the interviews which is really what i told you and then it says, how did I prepare for the interview? I told you I had fact sheets, I had trial runs, um, and those are the two main things. Okay, now this section is the, okay, now this section is the, the letter of acceptance and my reaction. Um, after I did my interview, it took like two months before they got back to me. I think I heard like round like, the interview was in October, November, something like that. And I had my acceptance letters in December. <sighs> oh my days, I was so scared. This is bear, from, bear in mind of a girl who flopped her first trial and this was only charged because you can't really do it in third year. And I was just like, <laughs> and I was so happy I got it. Like, it was so, so good. Um, I got Eurovia. Like, I really love the company. I'm with them right now. Um, oh, it just felt good. And I had, like, many, many, like, different, like, um, contracts to sign, like, for my bank details terms of agreement because i told you have to have a 2-1 to maintain it though like with second year things have been scrapped a bit but anyways i was just so so excited and i was just happy and i really want all of you to like try your hardest to like i find i sound like I'm such a mom i'm so sorry but i really want all of you to try your hardest to try and get internship scholarships there's many out there more than you think for engineering students and like they want to hire you there's quest the IT, the Institution of Civil Engineering runs that one, and yeah, you can get a bigger bursary than you do if you had like success. There's the Royal Academy of Engineering. There's even ones just specifically tailored for girls. I mean, for women. Um, so just do your research. Research is so important. So if you if you don't plan, you'll fail. No, I'm joking. You need to plan so you can like get a, a one step ahead. Um, so I hope this video was um, really informative. Like, if you have any other questions about how I got my internship, comment down below. Um, I might do another video, like, what my internship even entails, like, like the company, what I'm actually doing on site, besides, like, the day in the life. I want to, like, actually explain it more. I'm so happy, like, um, I'm so happy about, like, my YouTube channel. I'm so happy if I can help just, like, 10 of you. So thank you for watching. Bye.